very good morning to all the participants from India and, in, and uh, abroad. Soviet Institute of Engineering and the Technology Meerut, deemed to be university, and it's a center, center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Governance Research Studies, and Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies. The extent greetings to all the participants from India and abroad who are attending today the national webinar series on doubling farmers income by 2022 Atma Nirbar Bharat in agriculture. This webinar series is being hosted on every Thursday at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Today is 4th March 2021. The web this webinar is on the topic empowering farmers through extension and knowledge dissemination the role of mass media empowering farmers through extension and knowledge dissemination role of mass media on behalf of the honorable chancellor honorable vice chancellor the faculty members of the university and on my behalf, and as Professor Emeritus and Chairman of the Centers of Excellence, Center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Governance Research Studies, and Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies, welcome our today's guest speaker, Professor Dr. Sir Hari Om Srivastava. He is an architect of community radio in India, Former Additional Director General, All India Radio and Doordarshan, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Government of India and New Delhi, and President and CEO, World Development Foundation, Delhi. So far, under this webinar series, the university has organized 22 webinars on the topics, namely, role of agricultural cooperative societies and e-governance. Blockchain technology based fishery value chain. A self contained village, a felt need of the day. Spices informatics network value chain. Lantana camera, a, uh, a camo flagged treasure trout. Smart hill agriculture. Mara mobile, Mara marketing. Integrated mariculture, aquaponics, and precision agriculture. In short, MAPA biofarms for income revolution, smart tribal agriculture, optimizing value chain, digital agri tech and industry perspective, land resources information system in India, present and road ahead, weather decision technologies for increasing farm income, big data in smart farming. Sustainable soil and land management for climate smart agriculture. Understanding market dynamics for increasing farm income. Role of technologies in mitigating crop risk. How to generate additional profit via simple, attractive approaches in farm produce. Adoption of flexi rubber check dam technology. Potential benefit for farmers in rainfed and coastal agro ecosystems. Realizing the economic benefits of agroforestry by a panel of experts, Dr. Ayanadar Arunachalam, Dr. Mahendra Singh, and Mr. M. Perinbam, Mr. Perinbam. After all, organic humic solutions by increasing crop yields and quality while increasing farm income and improving soil health. Closing the nutrient loop, phosphorus management in protein farming improving nutrient use efficiency and farm productivity. Artificial intelligence enabled pest management technology for agricultural crop protection. Artificial intelligence enabled the pest management technology for agriculture crop protection without pesticides. Today is the 23rd edition of this national webinar series, which will be addressed by the architect of community radio in India Professor Dr. Hari Mom Srivastava. The key words are empowering farmers, extension and knowledge dissemination, and the role of mass media. 
agriculture sector is the foundation of Indian economy. It employs more than 50% of India's workforce and contributes almost 17 to 18% of its GDP. At present, agricultural livelihoods are being severely impacted world over as a result of global warming and climate change. India's labor intensive and subsistence based agriculture sector is particularly vulnerable to this development. Climate change has both direct and indirect effects on agriculture productivity, including changing rainfall patterns, severe drought, flooding, and changes in the geographical redistribution of pests and the diseases. Farmer needs timely, location-specific, and personalized information for effective control on their production, risk, and then market their produce to identify the market opportunities. Many national level programs, namely Digital India, Make in India, Skill India, Startup India, and Stand Up India have faced operational difficulties for its impact at farm level and farmer level, that too at small and marginal farmers. Small and marginal farmers constitute about 85% of the total farming community operational holders in India. Reforms towards digitalization of agricultural system. The doubling farmers income by 2022 report 2018, you know, is, is the in major reforms towards digitalization of agricultural sector in India. Government of India, through its National Informatics Center, has prepared IT blueprint for agriculture sector through a national conference on informatics for sustainable agriculture development in May 1995. And in 2005, the Government of India launched a national e-governance program in agriculture, NEGPA. -E now, through the doubling farmers income by 2022 report, which was submitted to the government 2018, which had four volumes out of 12, namely post-production agri-logistic, agri maximizing gains for farmer, volume, volume three, post-production intervention, agriculture marketing, volume four, empowering the farmers through extension and knowledge dissemination, volume 11, digital technology in agriculture, volume 12b, with the intent to achieve efficiency gains and convert into profitability from farm to fork. Agriculture logistic is the backbone for agribusiness and agriculture marketing is the brain behind value realization. Farmers produce must connect with multiple avenues to obtain, obtain value at each place across time and space and in various forms. Volume 12B has suggested strategic use of digital technology in farming systems life cycle through seven mission mode projects, which is given in its chapter 10 as below. Digitalized agriculture in three verticals, smart irrigated agricultural system, smart rain fed agriculture systems, and smart tribal agriculture systems. Digitalized agromet advisories and agricultural risk management solutions. Digitalized agricultural resources information system and micro level planning for achieving smart village and smart farming. Digitalized Agriculture value chain for about 400 agriculture commodities. Digitalized access to inputs, technology, knowledge, skill, agricultural finance, credit, marketing, and agribusiness management to farmers. Digitalized integrated and land water management systems facilitating per drop more crop. And lastly, the digitalized farm health management for reduction of farmers' loss, integrating human health, that is farmer health, plant health, animal health, soil health, water health, and fish health. 
it is facilitating you know strong ecosystem between you know animal agriculture and nutrition and human health there are three farm acts which were enacted and legislated in during 2020 farmers produce trade and commerce promotion and facilitation act farmers empowerment and protection protection Ag agreement on price assurance and farm services act and essential commodities amendment act these three seven mission mode project related to digital technology in agriculture and these three acts facilitate the role of mass media for, for our farming community for agriculture systems development and you know we have to reach the last male connectivity that is a farmer and farm and the country has to have an comprehensive database on national farmers data uh, on na farmer national database on farmers and national database on farm these two these two commodities are very essential they become the fundamental digital assets farmer database and farm database are the fundamental data assets for the agriculture development in india let us see the atma nirbhar bharat the road ahead this is the vision of our honorable prime minister of india shri narendra modi of making india self reliant rested on five eyes intent inclusion investment infrastructure and innovation based on five pillars economy quantum jump infrastructure one that represents modern india systems 21st century technology driven vibrant demography source of energy for self reliant india demand whereby the strength of our demand and supply chain should be utilized to full capacity this was announced on in uh, on 15th may 2020 by central government coming back to atmanirbhar bharat in agriculture during the third drench of atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan government of india has allocated rupees 1.5 lakh crore as a booster for the agricultural sector development now let us see the volume 11 of the doubling farmers income by 2022 report it very extensively talk about the role of mass media chapter 6 in that you know report volume 11 it talks about agriculture extension service delivery has been conceived with communicating research findings and improved agriculture practices to the farmers information on agriculture both crop and livestock was communicated to communicated among farmers from ancient times however with the development of development in agriculture research need arises to transfer new information and technologies to the users that is farmer agriculture extension can result in a domino effect by bridging the lab and land in a two way communication mode as also connecting farmer to farmer besides lab to lab more effectively further the lab and land needed to be connected in a bidirectional mode to mutual benefit mass media are essential ingredients needed for effective transfer of technologies that are designed to boost agriculture production to fulfill this need mass media like newspapers magazines radio tv film and internet play a vital role women have never been acknowledged as farmers even though making substantial contribution and women farmers have rarely found adequate and appropriate representation in state owned sponsored mass media be it in print tv or radio programs tv radio doordarshan kisan backed by technology advancement farm telecast continues to be an attractive source of agricultural information to rural population thanks to the increase in the number of television channels agriculture programs have gone up substantially in number 
However, the time share and the content delivery need attention. Some of the agriculture programs telecast by TV channel, both public and TV uh, and private are given below. DD Kisan TV, Hindi and regional languages, which were inaugurated in 2015. Green TV is a private TV channel launched in 2014. Yenadu TV Telugu, which has got a daily programs and Som TV in Marathi. Apart from using the vast network of television channels and radio purely for flow of technical information, it can be extensively used to publicize success stories of farmers who have demonstrated profitable agriculture besides utilizing their services in outreach programs. It can be extensively used to publicize. Community radio stations. Community radio stations provide ag updated agricultural information, which is location specific to a group of villages. The local population can be reached instantaneously and cost effectively. Atma centers, agriculture technology management agency centers of, of the government provided for establishment of community radio stations in all the districts by by funding infrastructure and content development for two years. However, response has not been encouraging. Only few community radio stations units have been established under the ATMA program. Some of the important reasons are delay in obtaining the license, restrictions on advertisement time, and challenges of creating attractive content. One of the ways of improving their viability is to motivate all the developmental agencies both public and private in the jurisdictional area to use common radio stations to advocate and promote their activities. Print media is still the value addition by high literacy rate. Despite the advent of televisions and instantaneous media like social media, print media has not lost its glory or its relevance. It's observed that the print media in agriculture has been growing steadily over time. With this long shelf life, the print media can be read and referred to by the farmers and agripreneurs and as and when they want. It is suggested that most popular agriculture magazines in the specific area could be subscribed subscribe to in favor of all the extension service providers with Atma financial support. Farm journalism is an another vehicle for extension services and outreach. Mass communication and journalism education assumes new significance in the age of globalization and communications. Mass media are the are agent of information education, entertainment, and motivation. They open up the farmers to accepting agricultural innovations and the technology and therefore serve as a vehicle for such transfer. Agriculture extension is extensively a communication process and it conveys improved or recommended or alternate practices to the farmers with a view to improving their methods of agriculture production and marketing of their produce. In broader terms, farm journalism is the science of conceptualizing, developing, and operationalizing information activities through various media that are supportive of agriculture extension. Farm journalism is an integral part of agricultural extension systems, and its growth is directly proportional to the performance of extension process, coverage, impact, and adoption. Agriculture journalism includes print journalism, online journalism, photo journalism, broadcast journalism, radio and television, agriculture and developmental journalism, and media ethics and press laws. A candidate with a degree in agriculture science or allied field can take up a postgraduate diploma program in journalism and become a well qualified to start a career in the field. India needs at least one such form you know journalist in every block it means that the country needs about 6500 block level you know agriculture form uh, journal, uh, farm journalist 
in the country to promote agricultural activities and also to help the small and marginal farmers in a very effective manner in achieving the goal of doubling farmers income by 2022. While discussing on the role of mass media in agriculture on 15th September 2017, myself as the chairman of Indian Chambers of Food and Agriculture Working Group on ICT talked about the media alternatives to lead future extension by examining the role of social media in agriculture and how we can take advantage of internet. There are three components to internet media, social media, email and form portal. And he suggested that it has to be in 22 constitutionally recognized languages to be able to do service for the common man in a very cost effective manner. We need to reach the farmers through social media, through email and a farmer farm portal in local languages. Social media is viewed as most powerful tool to connect with billions of people and its role can be strengthened by quality mass media and content generation. Amongst the communication technologies available for mass outreach, still radio is preeminent. Let us now turn to the address by the architect of community radio in India, Professor Dr. Sir Hari Om Srivastava, on the topic empowering farmers through extension and knowledge dissemination, role of mass media. Today's topic will motivate and galvanize the participants watching over telecast through facebook.com oblique soviet university india or youtube.com oblique soviet university in for establishing agri-tech startups at least one in every block resulting in establishment of 6500 agri startup in you know radio form journalism let me invite dr hari bom srivastava to address the participants before that let me introduce Dr. Haribo Srivastav. Dr. Professor Haribo Srivastav. <laughs> Professor Dr. Haribo Srivastav, he was from Indian Broadcasting Service. He was a former additional director general Additional Secretary to Government of India, both in All India Radio and Doordarshan. And currently, he is the President and CEO of World Development Foundation. Dr. Srivastava <coughs> is, is, uh, has provided 10 key solutions for the use of ICT and mass media for removing poverty in India, Asia and Africa. Dr. Srivastava worked for expansion of broadcast network in the country for the past for past 50 years in various capacities. He was involved in policy formulation and implementation of government and private broadcasting in India, both commercial and communi community, community radio act. He has formulated rules, regulations, acts, and the technology for community radio station in India as head of all in their radio station, uh, radio resources, he provided services in installing 40 numbers of educational high power <coughs> FM transmitters in the country for Igna, Gyan Vani channel, a number of commercial stations and community radio stations and agriculture channel of Ma Ministry of Agriculture and Government of India. Dr. Srivastava has been responsible for expansion of radio and TV, digital, satellite, mobile, handheld, etc. He established BCAL, a government company, All India Radio Resources, IT Division of All India Radio and Doordarshan, Agriculture Knowledge Dissemination System in the state of Bihar and, the, for, and for the government of Ethiopia. Dr. Srivastava has received several national and seven international awards and has written six books 
and about 150 research papers in the national and international journals. He worked as Commonwealth and ITU expert in Malaysia. He is now currently adjunct professor in YMCA University of Science and Technology, Faridabad, consultant to Gerson Lerman Group, a New York based world's leading B2B platform connecting professionals with expertise, consultant to Visa Q, an expert network service based in Japan, and honorary director of several colleges. We welcome Professor Srivastava to address the national webinar series on doubling farmers' income by 2022, Atma Nirvar Bharat in agriculture, and the topic empowering farmers through extension and knowledge dissemination, role of mass media. Over to Dr. Srivastava. Thank you, Professor Moni. And it was great listening to a lot of areas related to agriculture extension and how the farmers income can be doubled by 2022 in India and other places. <clears throat> a number of topics you have covered and a lot of knowledge. In fact, I gain a lot of knowledge from what you have been speaking and the vast area that you cover. A wonderful job is being done by you and definitely not only the Indian community, but the world community will be able to get benefit out of these series that we are doing it. It is a wonderful initiative and needs all applause for it. Thank you very much. And uh, I will be using some presentation uh, to show certain things and uh, uh, so how a community radio, what it is, what is broadcasting, how can they be used and how we have tried to use in the last at least 60 years in this country. Uh, so I am switching to sharing my presentation. So we start on the topic, empowering farmers to extension and knowledge dissemination, a role of mass media. And uh, I am Dr. H. O. Shrivastav, and these slides have been prepared by Aprajita Shrivastav, who is the uh, honorary director of World Development Foundation. So let us go through these slides, and uh, we will be discussing at the end. If there are any questions, I will be very happy to share with you. So I go to the next one. I am sharing a very small video to tell about World Development Foundation. World Development Foundation, New Delhi, India, is a knowledge-based global foundation which provides solutions in the field of education and agriculture by using ICT, broadcasting, and new media to achieve SDG 2030 goals. It has set up throughout the country and internationally broadcast an ICT-enabled digital system. It also conducts research and organizes seminars in emerging fields of science and technology. World Development Foundation, New Delhi, India is one stop place for all your media related requirements including broadcasting and IT. It provides turnkey solution for setting up community radio station, commercial radio stations, media centers, TV stations, satellite channels and also it works for audio and video production. The organization has experts with experience of more than 40 years in the field of broadcasting and IT. The foundation conceived, designed and implemented a unique agriculture knowledge dissemination system for Bihar government by setting up an integrated communication center in Bihar Agriculture University, Sabur. Sri Nitish Kumar, Honorable Chief Minister of Bihar, inaugurated the center comprising of the most sophisticated equipment. 
The first such system in the country has been established under the Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana. The system provides exchange of knowledge-based material interactively with the farmers located at various districts of Bihar. The center is equipped for production of high-quality video programs on various subjects of agriculture technology. The setup also includes a community radio station for distribution of knowledge related to agriculture and also providing entertainment. The integrated system uses another community radio station at Bal Patna. Now, just what I showed you for this small example of how an integrated mass media and ICT solution can be used for agriculture extension, which we did in Bihar Agriculture University uh, way back in 2011. And they have got two awards for uh, doing this type of work. Uh, best uh, e-governance in agriculture award uh, and best university award and they have also presented this uh, uh, solution in the BBC some news came there uh, so okay uh, this was just a show then we will try to explain what we did and how we did it now what is happening is mass media and ICT at at one time, we had two different things. People thought mass media is different, uh, ICT is different. Now everything is converging. So when I am going to talk of the mass media, I will uh, not go to the print media. And I will say why I am not going to print media uh, in the course. Uh, and first I am going only to the mass media, which is broadcasting. Now we all know broadcasting are three types. One is broadcasting, which is known as public broadcasting, and that is state-owned broadcasting, just like All India Radio or BBC, and almost all countries are having, which is somehow controlled by mostly by the government, or at least funded by the government. Uh, we inherited five radio stations in 1947 in All India Radio at the time of independence. That was the taken word by All India Radio. Then there is commercial and private broadcasting, which we started in about 2001. And the example is Radio Mirchi or Radio City. Uh, similar broadcast stations which are we are having about 400 in the country now and but they are totally commercial based so commercial based means they have to run the business and they have to earn their profit and therefore most of these radio stations resort to film music and similar programs so that they can earn some profit the third type of broadcasting is known as community broadcasting, which is supposed to be a non-profit service, which is to be built, managed, and operated by the community. And this is called wires to wireless. And as Professor Moni was telling, that the new media, because of the convergence, 
now there is hardly any difference between the mass media which was traditionally the broadcasting one to many and the new media which is also one to many now how they are affecting us mass media and ict the first thing is especially when we are going for the public service they provide conviviality and culture conviviality is a special thing it is it must have some friendliness then culture it must be based on your culture and traditions it is the best medium for education skill development and it is capable of providing economic equity opportunity and sustainability information delivery and then it is an ideal framework for doubling the farmer's income now we all are talking of doubling the farmer's income and as professor muni told in great detail the steps that has been taken in the last 5 years for doing it now when we talk about doubling the farmer's income one thing which is very important to remember is that the productivity of our farmers in india is just 2% as compared to a farmer in usa 2% one farmer is productive which is equivalent to 50 farmers in this country why this is due to lack of education skill knowledge and capacity what what is the steps how can we do it traditional agriculture that we have been following from ages it shifted to precision agriculture and then we are talking of knowledge agriculture which is a trademark of world development foundation when we talk about the traditional agriculture what it was this is something looks what we are doing in india and uh, many countries we visited ethiopia and nepal and some of the other countries in africa so this is a type of farming that we are doing it you can find here here you can see is putting the pesticide all through here he is doing the irrigation just putting water into the uh, farm and what happens is along with the the pesticide that you put when you put the water or when there is a rain the entire pesticide is going to the earth it is coming back it is getting circulated we are spoiling the entire environment and the climate and it we are adversely affecting the health of our people our uh, uh, cows or buffaloes and all the things and result result is even if my income doubles the farmer's income doubles if we are not able to preserve the climate then ultimately you may earn from somewhere and spend somewhere else so this is the traditional farming we have to we have to go ahead of the traditional farming and we have to attain what is known as knowledge agriculture which is the knowledge agriculture something it will look like that if you say it the knowledge agriculture is something which is being used in some of the countries and this is how their productivity has increased so many times of our productivity and what they are doing is they are using certain electrodes which are taking the Uh, data from soil and plant they are using the satellite they are using the satellite communication system and they are also using robotics they are using iot 
they are using UAV is the same thing uh, drones uh, for uh, spreading the pesticides and then there is an agri bot uh, laser system based uh, positioning system and then this is another research that we have done and I am trying to put the philosophy that we can have the cloud and if we provide the cloud based system then it is a part of broadcasting we can cover a very large area a number of software has been done the data is being gathered on soil on seeds and fertilizer and weather and there are so many agriculture software that professor Moni was talking like smart zone forming weather modeling fertilizer modeling smart micro irrigation etc etc now here what is happening is that we are preserving our climate we are maintaining sustaining the climate and if you want to irrigate all the plant doesn't need the water then why we are wasting the water on all the plants we can selectively put use the drone system or we can use some system robotic system to water that plant which needs it similarly the fertilizer and the chemical and the pesticide can be used on only those plants which we need it here what we are doing is we are putting on all whether it needs or it doesn't need for and then see most important is we are wasting our climate second thing is we are also if we are not going to the knowledge agriculture then we are bound to the climate and we are bound to the rain god if rain comes okay if it doesn't come it's gone so there will be either flood or there will be drought or something like that can we control it yes there is there is some way to do it and what Fujitsu is doing in Finland. Finland is having very harsh weather. It's very cold. And they are not able to get certain leaf based vegetables in harsh weather during winter. Therefore, they thought, can something, something be done to get it produced here itself in the winter? And Fujitsu, which is a Japanese company, they have created entire artificial light plant factory and they have projected their income in billions in next two years. So if we really want to make the agriculture helpful, then we have to increase the yield. We have to increase the yield. There is no other way. We have to increase the yield and we have to make it sustainable. If yield goes up, then every farmer will become richer. So this is the methodology. This is the way that we have to follow, not only for doubling the income. Why not traveling and four times or 550 times? It will happen. But how will it happen? When we are talking of all these high technologies, how the farmer and just Professor Mori told 82% of farmers in India are having the poor and marginal farmers. How are they going to understand what we are talking? We are talking, we are all experts and talking in our language and, and then we can understand each other. But does the person who really needs it, does he understand and how he will understand it? So there is a need, there is a, there is a long way to do it. We have to increase their knowledge. They must learn what we are talking and how can they adopt the newer technologies. And it has to be assisted by ICR and culture industry and the government. And then only the farmer's income will really, really increase. We go to the next slide. Now I'm coming again to the basics because we, we are talking of the mass media. And as I told that when I talk of the mass media, I'm only talking of the communication technology. I'm not going to the print technology. The communication technology 
we find is much superior as compared to the print technology because many of the farmers in our country as well as in african country they do not have capacity to read papers or they don't have access to the print media but when we talk of the mass media communication then this communication can happen in their own language in their own dialects and in a country like india where there are so many languages how do we communicate with all the people so mass media will afford them to listen and get knowledge maybe skill to some extent by broadcasting in their own languages now we all know if it is the history it was marconi 1901 that put the transatlantic communication and it was the advent of a communication based on short wave which is almost gone from the world today nobody is doing short wave broadcasting because of certain problems and because of newer technologies coming here the next step was 1933 armstrong who was the person who brought the fm and fm is a technology which is limited by its reach because once we put a transmitter and then it reaches only to a limited distance depending upon the height of the tower and also uh, the topography of the place so to a limited extent we can use the fm transmitters but it is very popular throughout the world these days indian community radio works on fm technology uh, in the country all the private fm broadcasting is also using fm technology in our country then the third great step was in 1926 john logie baird who invented the tv and then uh, the most charming thing for especially for professor moni who is expert it was 1969 that wind surf and bob kahan they put apronet and they were able to transmit lo l o in usa i think to mit university now this is the technology which is available today and as i told the short wave is almost fading out they are trying to have digital short wave not very successful so it is fading fm going very strong and of course tv going very strong and what we are having today i show you the dd studio in delhi so the a lot of programs are made from here and broadcast so you can have the audio and video both this is the a real a studio of all india radio trichy uh, where we are having lot of programs including programs for farmers uh, the kisan channel of radio comes from here i will come to the kisan channel slightly after some time and then social media of course professor moni talk that this is very important of course there is a maze of social media and it is always difficult to find out what is of our use so this is the type of technology that we are going now what happened is when i was tracing the history i told you that uh, you know we in 1947 got five radio stations which have gone now to about 500 today for all india radio and it was the all india radio under central government and then when i was in uh, uh, prasar bharat ministry of inb then there was always a, a conflict that uh, you know this is under central law and broadcasting can be done only by central agencies not by state agencies but slowly they agreed with lot of our persuasion in 2001 that uh, okay we can open it to the commercial broadcasting and then the frequencies were auctioned people purchased it and they are running about 300 to 400 uh, commercial radio station these days 
And then all of a sudden, there was thinking. And it is a very um, nice story. Let me show you perhaps the next slide. Okay. Let us listen to Dr. Echo Shivasta, the architect and father of technology about the birth of community radio in India directly. It was August of 2002 and I had gone to the residence of Madam Shushma Swaraj, the then Minister of Information and Broadcasting. The purpose was to brief her about some parliament question. After discussions were over, she just asked me, Dr. Shivastha, there are so many community radio stations in US and other countries which broadcast regular programs such as traffic conditions and weather. Why can't we have these in India? When I ask to your top people in Prasar Bharti, they say it is not feasible in India. My answer was, Madam, I don't foresee any problem technically and we can definitely have these in India. She wanted me to prepare a document and plan and give it to her directly. I came back, word on the details such as lattice plan, the technology, the system design, casting, etc. and handed over the document to her in the next few days. She discussed this paper with Sri Anil Bajal, the then additional secretary in the ministry of INB and handed the documents to him for further action. Myself and Sri Bajal had a few discussions and meetings on different aspects of establishing community radio in the country. The final draft was ready and it was the draft for Community Radio Act. This draft was put up to the government and finally the draft was approved as a Community Radio Act in December 2002. <clears throat> so this is how the Community Radio came here and uh, uh, the reluctance from uh, the top people in Ministry of IND and All India Radio was they thought that if private radio is have come in the form of commercial radio, if community radio comes, there will be higher competition. And uh, in fact, um, one of my top boss at that time told me that Dr. Shastra, you want to kill All India Radio? I told no. I want to make it more competitive. Only the people who can survive the competition have the ability to live and if you want to live we must go through the competition it would have not come because of the active participation of Sri Anil Bajal who is Lieutenant Governor of Delhi these days and late Madam Sushma Swaraj who was very keen to bring it and with her effort there was nothing which could not be achieved. So this is how the community radio came in the country. Now I go to the next slide. Now let us see what is a community radio. Community radio is a concept that is small FM broadcasting stations with low power can be used to put a localized broadcasting for the benefit of the society and the people. And what it basically has is, this is a real community radio station, which was designed, developed by World Development Foundation 
फॉर चौधरी चरण सिंह एग्रीकल्चर यूनिवर्सिटी हिसार इन हरियाणा एंड इट वॉज इनोग्रेटेड बाय ऑनरेबल चीफ मिनिस्टर श्री भूपेंद्र सिंह हुडा सो यूल फाइन दिस इज वन प्रोडक्शन स्टूडियो श्री हुडा इज सिटिंग हियर फॉर जोरिंग इन एग्रेशन सो वी हैव वन प्रोडक्शन स्टूडियो वन स्मॉल रिकॉर्डिंग कम ट्रांसमिशन स्टूडियो so when people are speaking here they can be doing all sorts of programs and former or, or anything that we will discuss about the programs later on then this is recorded here or if you want to do live broadcasting then it can go live using transmitters this is a 50 watt transmitters which was also manufactured by world development foundation and then this program goes to a tower and it is broadcasted this can be received by any receiver and of course these days on mobile phones also there is a provision for fm listening so it can be listened by mobile phones also now in india you know when we did the latest plan and uh, in 2002 then we had thought that only about 4000 community radio stations could be installed in the country and for doing that we have to limit the range of the community radio stations so a 50 watt transmitter and 30 meter tower this is the range this is the total limit of the, the power and height of the tower and therefore it covers in between 10 to 50 10 to 15 km of radial area from the university or whatever place we are putting it so this is the type of range that is covered the advantage is put it in karnataka and put the local language people will get in their language put it anywhere you can do it so that is the advantage whether they are educated they can read they can write or not but can they can listen to the program in their own local language and uh, this is why we also when we train the people we tell them that it should the local person if i start going and talking to them maybe they will not be very happy listening to my way of talking but if a local lad a farmer is coming and talking from the studio then it makes a real real impact so and then after we had done it and then uh, in 2007 i talked to minister of communication and it it was media lavisia and uh, media lavisia i wanted to test this huge of community radio in the country and i wanted them to fund the program and they funded the program for establishing five community radio stations in state agriculture universities in different parts of the country so with their fund and support world development foundation established five community radio stations one this is radio raipur se cm bol raha hu so this was done in raipur chatisgarh second was done in kumar ganj faizabad up because they wanted five linguistic regions uh, to be used for this and see the impact uh, third was done in tamil nadu agriculture university koimatur uh fourth was done is bihar um agriculture university uh ranchi uh and fifth of course we just saw hisar so in five different linguistic regions we established the community radio stations and we trained the people we also developed some content taught them how to produce the content for the radio journalism and radio broadcasting and this type of thing was done established all were inaugurated by either chief minister or governor 
so that more people uh, are able to uh, know about it and there is a wider coverage and curiosity about the community radio station so this is how it was done and this entire job was done by 2009 and after doing this we went to Minister of Agriculture, Media Lab Asia and uh, World Development Foundation both approved the Minister of Agriculture. We had certain discussion there and we showed the impact that what has happened by, by installing this community radio station, have the yield has increased, are the farmers happy, are they using some new technology. So survey was done and all the details were taken to the Minister of Agriculture. Minister of Agriculture, there were several meetings. And then in the year 2009 itself, they agreed that any agriculture university or KVK who wants to establish the community radio, the entire funding will come from Minister of Agriculture. The first year, in fact, and I was a member of the committee, 80 crores was put for putting the community radio station. Unfortunately, it could not be utilized. Now, as I told that community radio is a great tool and we wanted to do a, another experiment in Ethiopia. And Mr. We, this project was of Ministry of Communication and IT, Government of Ethiopia. And they selected, you see, you can see these remote places, all these remote places. And the places were so remote that you know there was no hotel and uh, no facilities for washroom and my people went there and they stayed there and the entire installation of seven community radio station was done within two months and when i went there and met my embassy they told you are the only organization <coughs> for whom they have the appreciation. Otherwise, they always come and tell that we have given this project to the Indian people. It is not happening. It is getting delayed. Please help us. But your projects, they are very happy. And when I went and met the Minister of Communication IT, he stood up and he told, yes, the project has come. And so nicely only because of you. And then I myself traveled to one of the uh, Finote Salem. This is the Finote Salem, I think about 300 kilometers from Addis Ababa. And when I went there, <coughs> then we were traveling in the car and everybody has tuned from what distance they can start listening to the Finote Salem. In Ethiopia, they have allowed transmitters of 700 watt powers. Here in India, it is only 50 watt power. There, there is 700 watt power and therefore once we reached about 50 to 60 kilometers and nearer to Finote Salem, they started getting their radio programs and all the people who were traveling with me from the Ministry of Communication and the local Ethiopian people, some administration people, they stopped the car, they started dancing. They were so happy to listen. I think this was the first five community radio station that we established. Maybe one was established earlier in some school. So they were so happy. And just now they have published some paper in Academia and they say that all the five community radio stations are working very fine. We put in 2015. It is 2021. So they are all working. We had got very nice and uh, equipment were put and with standby and certain supports and this is the appreciation letter which was issued by <coughs> the His Excellency Ambassador to World Development Foundation. This is there are another two stations that we put in Dhangadhi in Nepal. There they allow three kilowatt to five kilowatt transmitters to be put for community radios. And so this is a five kilowatt transmitter which was put over there.
Now, what is very important is that community radio can be installed, commissioned, trained, that is one thing. But people have to run it. And for that, they need a lot of programs. And the programs can be anything, as we told. It can be on social development. It can be on livelihood generation, self-employment. In fact, some of the programs that were prepared for Bihar Agriculture University and also for Kumar Ganj Fajabad was on how to make pickles. How can you sell your pickles? Where will you sell it? Where is the market? Of course, agriculture, animal husbandry. You can also talk about rights of women and workers. Women programs, question and answer, health and hygiene, career guidance, democracy, SDG 203. All these types of programs can be done with the help of experts, farmers, and locals. Content generation is always done at the field level. It can be modified at a remote place. It's all right. Post uh, production can be done there. And these are the ways that uh, you know can be used for um, doing the program. This is this is uh, and this is the program being produced at uh, Coimbatore Agriculture University, and you know they got a honey seller having a thirty year experience and doing it, and they she presented the program, and then it was. You know, the export also came, scientists also came, and they started telling, yes, what type of the program it could be. And how can she take it to the market? How can she, uh, you know, increase their production? And how can the university can help it? This type of interaction can happen by use of the community radio station. Magical programs, certain programs where you want to give information also can be in the part of musical programs and then they call all the NGOs and self-help groups, village developments, panchayats, and then how to do the farming, how to do other things that can be done. The other very important thing is, uh, you know, you can call the people uh, from the administration or agriculture scientists and you can interview there and them and broadcast it. The school teachers and rural sanitation program. So a lot of type of program that and you can do it for agriculture, related field, development, uh, marketing, how to do it, and so on and so forth. And when the content is made, as I told that, you have to go to the community. You see, you can go to a cobbler, you can go to the field, you can talk to the woman, how they are doing it, what are their problems. And you have to project the problems so that all the uh, administrators, the concerned people, let them listen to it. This is the this is the link for the content. Uh, WDF India that are the radio that is If you go there, you will get these uh, programs available there in different languages, uh, right from uh, you know the Tamil to Hindi. To Chhattisgarhi, to Haryanvi, the program, some of the sample programs are there, and they can be seen how good they are, how executive they are. So, community radio, as I told, has a great thing to happen, and it should have happened. Uh, uh, and then you know there is a need for a lot of training for people for production of the program for management of the station. So we have put here what are the things they have to learn, how to do the recording, editing, archiving, maintenance, how to run it up. And then, of course, some uploading, etc. How to use the mobile application and like that. This is the uh, training that we import in the Raj code. This is the recent training that we have done for, I think, two weeks back for Kuch Bihar Panchan and Burma University where we have put the community radio station and we have extended also for certain things. And this is in Hisar. The VC Hisar is sitting here with me. And Hisar is Kalchen University. We had all the people trained. And this is some uh, community in uh, Hyderabad 
and we put a community radio station and train their people. So all these uh, people standing um, are from World Development Foundation. They went, they told how to make the program, how to do it, and this becomes a part of the community radio. And now, before I go here, I want to tell you that, unfortunately, uh, when I talked to uh, Madam Jusma Suraj and um, Mr. Anil Bajal at that time, our plan was that there should be about 4,000 community duty station by six or seven in four or five years. But unfortunately, it has not gone up with a number of things. And uh, it's difficult to tell it here. But uh, maybe slightly because of less zeal of the people uh, for doing it, uh, for uh, making it operational. For example, we had a community radio station in a place known as Bar in Bihar, BRH. And it was a wonderful community radio station. About 300 farmers used to interact daily with the community radio station to know their, to tell their problem and get a solution. But the problem is that the normal time of KVK scientists is 10 to something, the farmers comes at 7 o'clock and they were reluctant to come early and doing it there and in their own rules and regulations. So these are the things uh, which, which have pulled us. So we are hardly having about 20, 30 uh, community radio stations in chemicals and agriculture universities as a date, even after 20 years uh, or so of formulation. So there is a need. And in fact, a government must do something to uh, increase the number of community radio stations, which is one of the most effective tools in education, educating the farmers and putting the knowledge to the farmers. And wherever we did it in Birsa Culture University, the director extension did some survey and he has told that people have started growing certain fruits and vegetables which they were not doing earlier and therefore their income has increased. So something has to be done about it. It is one way, one step to go ahead. Now, as I told that, there is a convergence. Uh, all IT technologies are converging. And therefore, uh, what we are doing is uh, that uh, we are using three technologies. One is the, we use the local cloud to make the entire thing as a e-university or e-partsala. And then we are putting the normal community radio station, which will give you 10 to 20 kilometers of the coverage area and then we put on the internet so can you can do it on all digital devices anywhere in the world. So this is the, we call it hybrid radio. So you get a community radio and you can increase the reach. Now how it is going to affect it, I will tell you in the next slide. Now look here, this is what we did recently for uh, this Kuch uh, Bihar Panchan and Burma University. And uh, what we have done is, this university is in Kuch Bihar, West Bengal. So we have created three layers. One layer is the cloud radio, which will go in the entire university premises. The second is the community radio, which is about 15 to 20 kilometers. They are having a very good topo topology. And third layer has gone to, you know, internet radio. And by internet radio, we have covered there are 15 affiliated colleges. And uh, now, if definitely it happens that generally you are having all the experts and knowledgeable persons and research scholars who happen to be in the university. Um, and in colleges, you may not have same expertise of the teach, teaching uh, staff. Therefore, whatsoever you are teaching here, it is available to all the places. So all the, uh, you know, the students of the colleges, they get benefited by what you are teaching from the university. And not only that, what happens is 
the entire thing is recorded. And if you put the recording on a website, that is what we I will explain it here. Then this recording is not the teacher is gone and think is gone. It is available to them. And tomorrow, supposing that teacher is not there, but still I'm having the resource. So we are building up the resource using this type of technology. And then we have integrated this with a web. So you can see all these programs are there. And it is also there is a cloud radio program thing which is available and there is a streaming thing which is available. And the streaming means when the professor is talking here, it is being streamed on the internet. And then there is interactivity in WhatsApp. So he can come back and put certain questions and he can interact with the professor, any of the student who wants to do it, either in writing or uh, in uh, verbally. And uh, the biggest advantage is that the quality of education immediately gets increased because people are listening from anywhere. The content is available on the website for all the time to come. So the, the teaching methodology is used better. People can ask any question and like that. And here, you know, the university was able to, you know, uh, get back all the investment that he did by increasing a small fee of, for the students because of the additional things that they are getting it. And that makes it uh, totally viable. And uh, I showed the film in the beginning, Agriculture Knowledge Dissemination System that we did for Bihar. And uh, uh, basic structure was that we created a electronic media production center, which you can see here. And uh, then we put uh, archives and a database. And this knowledge base had a number of videos and audios and texts and different practices that can be done. And then we connected with the high speed data lines to different Krishi uh, Vikas Kendras. You saw in the film that we connected to 20 KVKs got connected. And it was also was put to the internet and web so people can access from anywhere. Um, inaugurated by Shintish Kumar, I am here talking to him and explaining the system. Now, what happened is that, uh, you know, here the, prof the professors will sit here and perhaps I can go to the next slide. And now you see they are connected like this. So what happens is professor can sit here, you can show them some video and certain practices and then uh, all the people can listen either on their mobile phones or coming to this uh, KVKs and assisted by the scientists. And when they listen to this, then they can ask the question to the professors. The great advantage that we found that some of the farmers comes here and he shows some plant or some fruit and says, look here, this is the problem happening with my leaves or plant or something like that. What should I do? And the teacher has to give you a stand solution like a doctor. You go and you have to put this pesticide or fertilizer or whatsoever. And then after two weeks, he comes back and shouts on him and tells, look here, nothing has happened. So give me a solution. So everybody becomes very active. They are doors. And in fact, for implementing such a thing, we had to do a lot of meeting, integrate, you know, involvement of vice chancellor, talking all the scientists, telling them that you have to tell them somewhere very reluctant. They are telling me don't know the answer to this. So they have to upgrade their knowledge. So it's not one benefit. There are there are thousands benefit of this type of thing where whatsoever prescription you are giving is being used by the farmer and he comes back and tells him his yield has not increased. So if in a one acre he has, uh, he is producing say five tons, then what happens? If it is not six tons, then what is the, what is the advantage of 
uh, anything. You are not doubling the income. Then you are only giving them SP. So, if you want to really increase the yield, this type of system is only way. His knowledge has to increase. His methods of uh, sowing, irrigation, farming and marketing has to increase. And it has to come in concrete terms. I go to the next one. And this is the type of, uh, you know, a studio and electronic media production that we do it. This is this is a community radio studio. Uh, and this is the electronic media production. This is the editing room. This is uh, production control room. And this is sound loft sort of system. So this is the type of thing that is developed uh, as a part of hardware. And this coupled with programming and the training that only makes them um, makes them useful. <clears throat> I think I have some time. I can continue for some more time. Yes, Professor. You have time, but it is it is. Uh, 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 you can you can go up to one o'clock. No problem. Okay. Okay. And uh, no, it's I'm it's very happy that uh, you are able to give a complete uh, you know the value chain that. You know how it was uh, uh, initiated with the world experience and operational experience, and how you are instrumental in, you know, uh, through for uh, legislative support. The credit goes to late Shrimati Sushma Swaraji, the former Union Minister of INB, and the former uh, Additional Secretary and the first Lieutenant Governor Sri Anil Baijalji. I think it is, and we are very happy to have you today to make uh, address in our national webinar series that this type of first-hand experience is very much essential today. And uh, please carry on. And I don't want to stop you. Please. All right. So All thank right. you very much. And uh, you know what happens is that, uh, you know, when I'm doing a project, Sometimes I will interact with many other projects, and then I'm not able to sleep. Uh, when uh, Mr. Nitish Kumar had been a great in uh, 2011, today it is possible that we are doing video conferencing very easily and we are having slightly better speeds. But in 2011, I had the the fiber network didn't reach over there. I had to take the lines and then last mile connectivity I had to put by installing micro system from their KVK, which were in the inner villages to that place. So even, even the communication connecting to 20 places was a great challenge at that time. Now it may be much easier with the development of technology, probably better speed and Elon Musk bringing further higher speed with the um, satellite so yes uh, but every everything that uh, we try to do with the challenge that depends upon how much interest we take it when i take a project the project is not uh, you know anybody else it becomes my project and then i i don't sleep <laughs> i don't sleep so let me let me talk about uh, something that universal interactive education using video audio text with self-evaluation. This is a system that we are trying to develop it. And we are also trying to implement for some people. I can't tell the name. We are in the process of signing a MOU. So let us see what it is. <clears throat> I call it a hybrid education. So it should be a mix of classroom and online. And this is suitable for higher, middle, and primary education. It is suitable for livelihood generation and lifelong learning. The main features are it uses audio, video, text, lessons with inbuilt question bank. There is interactivity using lectures via video conferencing. And the advantage is this. Full course is material is available online for learning at any time, anywhere. And the keys, the keys 
it is as transparent as gmat because no two student is getting the same question so there is a question bank and uh, there is a way to randomly select certain question and throw to the student so once we say that this is the learning objective then he will not get a certificate as long as he has not fulfilled that objective and he has not gained enough knowledge and skill so this type of things which i you know once visited buac and they were uh, i learned from them that they used to train pilots on simulation system and they used to tell that BOAC that once my pilot has been trained here, perhaps we'll be able to fly the plane without actually really having flied earlier. So this type of thing, because you cannot pass the course unless you are lucky. So let me let me see what type of thing it is. So some of the features I will show you first. Uh, this is one course which has been done on media and technology. And this course was done by uh, Mr. Singh, who was a former uh, engineer chief of Doodarshan. So he was the coordinator of the course. And uh, the advantage of this course is that uh, you will be having, number one, you can select your language. So if this course has been created, I will show the live one one also. So if you if the course has been created, then any language you can select, you will get it about 90 languages you can get. And that entire text will change into that language. Second thing is what you are getting in the course and who are the people who are doing, going to do it, uh, that will also come over here. Then you are having all the videos here are available. The text is there, the formats are there, everything is there. And thereafter, you have to go through a uh, Quiz. So I will go to a live one just after one more slide. Now you see here, there is a course on chicken farming. I detailed that some of the courses we created for uh, livelihood generation and that was for COVID. These all courses are free even today. So anybody can come and learn the course and go away. And he will get a certificate also if he is able to pass and go through the course okay so after that i am going to the next slide and show you the line yes I am. okay so this is the live course on cattle rearing this is a livelihood generation course so people anywhere can do it now the first advantage here is that you can select the language, any language that you want. I think there you can have Arabic, Basque, I don't know, so many, Bosnian. So all the languages, French, or any even Arabic languages, Gujarati, anything you can have it. So let me show you going to the Hindi, which I can understand. So cattle raining have become Pashu Palan and you can get all the course Sikhne Ka Maksad, Patikram, etc, etc. So you will be getting in Hindi. So like that, they can select the languages and uh, this we were trying for uh, this universal one. And uh, so uh, we thought that this course should be available to anybody anywhere in the world and uh, they can select the language by themselves. Now, when we are talking about the cattle rearing, okay, then there is certain learning objective that what will he achieve after doing this and what are the course which is covering cattle rearing for profit, practical and economic aspects of milk production, how to get profit from dairy farming, cattle raising, cattle health and production, from disease and vaccination, clean and healthy milk, etc. 
And then this also says that what is the background, why you should do it, how the profit will come. It talks about the course material. That text is having four lessons, four English videos, seven Hindi videos. And then uh, there are uh, audios are also available, eight lessons. And then video conferencing. So what we do is that if somebody wants to do this course, of course, at present it is all free. So if somebody wants to do this course, what he has to do is he has to log in here and then first he can uh, he can go through the he can go through the course. Cloud hearing. So he is getting the uh, video on this and then he can further go. Then he will find uh, video listen English. Then he will go to video listen Hindi. And then uh, this is another video lesson and then like that. And then he will be getting uh, what will you be able to get of this. In the session, we will learn selection of this, 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 this. And then how do you select the cow breed and like that. So this, these are the lesson. So he learns the lesson in advance. And then now if I will show you one lesson. Uh, which has been recorded by Aparajita. Yes, let me see this lesson. This is the this is the lesson on cattle health and production from protection from diseases and vaccination. Okay, and then we have given different languages. They can select any language they want it. So we go in the English one, and then I will play this. <laughs> University. I'm going to tell you about cattle health and production, protection from diseases or, and also vaccination. Animals that produce milk need to be healthy and an effective healthcare program should be in place. Diseases in milk animals. Animals are prone to occasional sickness and diseases. in the behavior of an animal is an indication of the sickness in the animal. Animal requires immediate medical attention during sickness. Sick animals become dull and tired and the lips and ears droop. Sick animals stop feeding their young ones and there is less production of milk. Sick animals pass loose dunk and colored urine and sometimes they may either feel very hot or very cold. Thank you. 
diseases of milk animals are classified into three categories parasitic communicable and non communicable diseases in milk animals animals are prone to occasional sickness and diseases parasitic diseases parasitic diseases may be caused by ectoparasites and endoparasites ectoparasites are external parasites such as ticks fleas and lice which mainly live in skin and cause skin diseases endoparasites are worms such as tapeworm that are found inside the body of the animals and affect the stomach and intestine communicable diseases communicable diseases in milk animals are caused by pathogens such as viruses bacteria and fungi viral diseases most common viral diseases in milk animals are foot and mouth diseases and cowpox disease foot and mouth disease is a common highly contagious viral disease in milk animals animals suffering from this disease exhibit blisters on their feet and mouth excessive salivation and limping and shivering with high body temperature cowpox is a viral disease caused by pox virus affected animals develop small nodules all over their bodies bacterial diseases cattle suffer from bacterial diseases like cattle plague or rinder pest salmonellosis and anthrax anthrax is a very acute and infectious bacterial disease it causes the swelling in the body parts of the animal especially the neck and is accompanied by high fever fungal diseases milk animals also suffer from fungal diseases such as ringworm disease fungus infect the intestines and other organs of the milk animals the symptoms of this disease are gray white areas of skin with an ash like surface that are circular slightly raised and are found on different body parts non-communicable diseases non-communicable diseases are the diseases which are caused by nutrient deficiency malfunctioning of body organs and mechanical injuries such as fractures vaccination regular vaccination is the easiest and the cheapest way to prevent diseases
So, like that, you know, there will be uh, so many courses and videos in Hindi and English, and then there is also provision for uh, getting the script uh, of English uh, video in any language they want, and uh, and here, of course, we can always change uh, uh, the text language. and they get all the details here about vaccination and other things. Now what happened they are similarly they are also having the audio lessons so people can uh, listen to the audio also some of the lessons and once they have completed this lesson then comes this quiz portion. Now, it says you have learned in this course about clean milk production, which covered the following topics. This, 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 all those topics. Now you have to go through the quizzes to qualify this course. So what it contains is it creates a question bank. And uh, for every student that he has gone to this course, he will get a different question uh, using a... Uh, using a um, random selection uh, for example he says milk and milk products are the best sources of calcium iron uh, and like that they will go on putting yes or no and then you go to the next question and I, I will just put it so that it becomes all right or wrong 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 Yes, right, next. And now it says that five out of ten, and it says that because you have got less than eighty percent, so you have not passed the course and you have to go through the course again so he gets you know depend uh, based on the objective of the course as long as he has not got enough skill uh, you know in certain courses we have also put the you know the, a, a photo of the cow with certain disease and then we ask them okay find out which disease it is so once he has gone through that and he has learned all the lessons completely and he has become competent with this, then only he passes this course. Nobody can help him, neither the examiner, nor the teacher, nor the professor, anybody. It is only the computer is going to test it. So this type of course uh, helps people. in, And then the courses that uh, are available here are on different ones, the online courses. Uh, this is course on SDGB 2030. The type of education, COVID 2019, what education philosophy should be adopted for that? There are certain uh, courses available on that. Women empowerment. And in women empowerment, we are having a lot of skill development courses. By going through these courses, uh, for example, honeybee keeping or chicken farming, now, if they are putting chicken farming in the backyard, okay, they can learn it. In certain places, it has also been told that you can you have to spend just 500 rupees, you can bring this and, and like that you can grow and start earning money. So, livelihood courses are there and then we are having agriculture and diet courses uh, are there. Then, of course, artificial intelligence and then mass media and communication like that. So, so many courses are there. Uh, for people to go ahead, do it, 
and this type of education has the great advantage that people can uh, study at their own place at their own pace and at their own place anywhere they can study in their own languages and they can uh, they can get certified only once you have really understood the course and you have done it then within that there is also a provision of interaction that teacher comes and he teaches he says okay you have gone to the video now let us discuss the video now teacher is also teaching there and um, through video conferencing within the course and whatsoever teacher is talking to you that also gets recorded and that becomes a future course so this type of uh, you know interaction is one way of doing it and this is also a mode of i will not say normal broadcasting but a conversion broadcasting using convergence now we do a lot of international and uh, national seminars in fact this was the uh, conference that we did with uh, ministry of agriculture and media lab asia of mcit and here we had called all the chief secretaries of course all didn't come and agriculture secretaries written by ministry of agriculture that they should either attend themselves or send somebody to know how community radio can be used for the benefit of the farming community and they came something happened and then in the normal bureaucratic system the things have gone slow again so uh, as i told that there are hardly 30 to 40 community radio stations for all the agriculture universities there are more than 50 agriculture universities and 700 chemicals uh, so it has not gone as it had happened and then uh, we had of course here professor muni was there he knew that uh, he knows that we had with aldo un and other universities we we had a conference for using sdg uh, using the technology for sdg 2030 and uh, even uh, you know to say that uh, the one of the agriculture university whose vice chancellor was here he promised that uh, he has got sanction for 30 community radio stations but uh, i don't know what has happened i don't think anything has happened on that so people will have to be proactive maybe certain um, if uh, the orders comes at certain um, top level maybe they may be more proactive here we did intend in broadcasting mr bajal is here and this is his uh, vice chancellor uh, of the guru gobind singh university and then we get students from different places in the world for knowing visiting our place seeing the way we work and also knowing how a non profit organization like wdf works and uh, these students came from you know efr rotterdam in netherland and they were the management students and they came here and then i asked them how you have selected out of all world development foundation and they told they could uh, listen from somewhere that this is one organization who is working in the field of uh, knowledge and agriculture and so they wanted to do it uh, we also got a, a team from japan who wanted to see what we have done and how we have done uh, this is a uh, seven a workshop we did with the help of team kat france which is the you know biggest organization who working in digital broadcast technology so they had uh, come here and uh, they wanted to understand what india is doing in in the field of broadcasting especially going towards digital and uh, we organized and call all the top people from um, broadcast uh, uh services uh, including all india radio and doordarshan and there was a very live interaction to know uh, the future of broadcasting and how can it be used and in what way it could be profitable 
And then uh, this is some of the uh, footprint that we have done. I have already done almost we have worked throughout India um, at different places, uh, putting a lot of uh, radio stations and TV stations, electronic media production centers. Uh, some of the universities have put electronic media production to great use, especially when they want to teach media courses and uh, uh, usually give some funding for uh, for those universities who wants to do media courses. And uh, we helped Khalsa College of Delhi University who has got about 5 crores for uh, starting this uh, uh, type of system and teaching. Mm -hmm. So it is it is uh, best way because we cannot teach just by giving a lecture. They have to come, they have to do practically. And as I told when we were talking about the agriculture, at the end of the day, you know, the, the farmer should not be able to be happy by just saying that, okay, I created so many quintals of uh, uh, wheat. Uh, last year, I'm having so many quintals of wheat. This year also, but the MSB has increased so my uh, my income has doubled. It has not happened. It has not happened. And this will not take them to where they want to go. Only way to happen is last year I produced two quintals. Now I use better technology, better farming, uh, better marketing. And my thing has gone to four quintals. And now I have all more money. Then that is the way to go ahead if you want to really make the planet a good place to live and we want to sustain the planet it may be possible to increase the yield by putting some more uh, pesticide or by putting some more uh, insecticide or something like that but, but 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 uh, the way to go ahead is to use the technology and the knowledge for the growth next. So that is all I wanted to tell. I'm uh, so grateful. And uh, this is the end of my slide. So <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it, was, uh, it was very I, nice, uh, uh, Dr. Srivastavaji. And uh, you know, your great experience, expertise and your vision and your mission on community radio stations for this country for knowledge transmission knowledge explosion and also you know having an end in an end, end product like knowledge agriculture trademark of world development foundation and it is a wonderful lecture and there is an um, uh, query please respond mr Mahantesh Patil, you can read it and then you can respond. Uh, yes, thank you. thank you for the question. And uh, I think that the community radio is not a very expensive method of doing it. It is one of the cheapest method to reach the people. The advantage of the community radio is over any other mode of communication. For example, you can talk of YouTube or you can talk of uh, Facebook or anything. At least you need a smartphone and you also have to pay something for the data. Here you don't pay anything. So, you know, when we create a delivery system and my 50 years of uh, working in broadcast uh, organizations, we always want that the end user should not pay anything for what we are doing it. If end user has also to share the cost, then it becomes difficult. So when we are doing the delivery, in the case of community radio, the farmers doesn't spend a penny. He only needs a a receiver of say 40 rupees, 50 rupees, 
or any cheap mobile which is already he is using is also having account so he is not paying anything but when you go for uh, when you go for uh, this type of thing like uh, facebook youtube of course uh, you can again reach there and the data is becoming cheaper these days with uh, uh, geo mobile or like that but still he needs to have a phone he needs to have the data many places the data links are not very good villages it is not available still it may happen in some time and the other thing is that on facebook or youtube you are getting maze of uh, you know information and when you are going to the facebook or maze um, or uh, youtube or any such uh, social media then you can get diverted in a community radio what we call if it is done for agriculture we call it a farm radio so agriculture if you uh, if a farmer tunes in the morning he wants to know information on agriculture so it is more devoted it is more you know focused on a particular theme so this is why community radio is is not expensive it is cheaper and in many places in the country it has been used with a great benefit it's very nice that uh, you know his question also is very important that when you have the entry of digital and uh, mobility services with rich reachable cost and entry to do how you know community radio station you also very nicely answered because you have to have a signature tune because when uh, you know the you know for any all the radio stations or doordarshan you have a signature tune that is more important you know for yes. the people to get yeah. attracted so this is you know uh, you know customized and dedicated to the point for the farmers in the local language without yeah. any hacking yeah. you know today facebook or whatsapp or any anything which can have been uh, which can be hacked but it is a local language to the farmer is more important and this yes. technology yes. there are many technologies can come but the thing is that some of the technologies which are you know which can deliver goods with confidence to the common man that way especially for the farmers in local language and you know once again it is a competition content delivery and um, you know it's uh, it's uh, trustworthiness only can stand at the ground so let the competition have its day you know that's that's more important and uh, but you know is the mr manish is there any other uh, query no otherwise he would have, yeah he's, okay he is uh, he's once again he is asking what is the status of government plan to turning crs into a virtual uh, rural knowledge center for sustainability yes this is uh, this is a very good question and uh, i forgot to talk about it you know uh, when in 2001 we had st- we had started community radio uh there was a question of how to be able to sustain with the expenses on the community radio station so number one it has been allowed that every hour of normal program you will have five minutes of advertisement so you can get advertisement from fertilizer company or uh, you know any related pesticide company any any, any place and you can broadcast 5 minutes per hour of advertisement one two uh, dvp which is a government organization uh, that all the advertisements which are given by uh, different uh, government agencies that goes via dvp now dvp has been uh, has been uh, told and it has become a rule now that some of the advertisement will compulsorily go to the community radio stations and every community radio station who has become operational get some advertisement from dvp which they broadcast they submit the bill and they get money so you can make it sustainable Mr. Manish. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Patel, for your very uh, pertinent question, and also 
participating in this important program. Thank you very much and keep tuned to this program on every Thursday at 11 a.m. Now it is now one, one o'clock. Now we have exceeded our uh, time limit. And uh, Dr. Srivastava, it is very important that you delivered the talk today for empowering farmers through extension and knowledge dissemination. And you covered almost a lot of point. You know, it gives a value chain. And uh, it, it is not only the technology which you talked about it, but you have talked from the the how the 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 minister of the day in 2002 took interest and the present lieutenant governor mr <coughs> anil baiji uh, baijalji and you were as a technocrat all the three were instrumental in bring out a community radio station act in the country and even though you have visualized for about 6,000 community radio stations in the country, quite unfortunately, that we, the India has reached only about something like less than 50 community radio stations, even though we have more than 750 Krishi Vigyan Kendras. And every district has got a, you know, Atma Agriculture Technology Management Agency. There are so many engineering colleges, 1,500 universities, and also, you know, about 400 agriculture colleges and 100 ICR institutions and about 75, about 100 agricultural university, both private and public. And many non, you know, you know, agriculture university having agriculture discipline. For that matter, you know, Soviet University is the first university, Soviet Institute of Engineering and Technology, having four centers of excellence, out of the two centers of excellence, dealing with the Center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Government Research Studies, synergization of IT and Agriculture Technology, and Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies. It is very important that technology enabled knowledge dissemination to 140 million operation, agricultural operational holders in the country is very important. 14 crore farming community. They are, they are voiceful. They are not voiceless, but they are not unreachable. And they have to be reached in the local language. In that connection, the seven mission mode program of introducing digital technology in agriculture and the three farm acts, which were introduced in 2020, can facilitate through this such type of technologies especially common radio station, to establish agri-tech startups in every block. At least one in, uh, you, know, uh, you know, every block, you know, resulting in 6,500, uh, you know, uh, community radio stations in the country to facilitate the 14 crore farmers <coughs> to produce, you know, in, you know, for about 400 agriculture commodities and the livestock and fishery sector very effectively india is the only country which has got rain you know there is a sunshine every day yeah and yeah. Uh, they produce you know throughout the year so our agricultural value chain has to be technology enabled and it is traceable and we should be able to bring out a complete you know you know uh, you know uh, you know uh, uh, chemical residue free you know this uh, you know awareness to the farming community in the language in which they can understand taking care of the you know reading you know uh, problems so uh, you know today that way you know in today's lecture is very important and um, you, you know the, you, you know it is it is it is um, it, it is a technology revolution during the last 20 years, starting from 2002 to 2021, the country should be filled with the community radio stations. It's very important. Yes. Yes. And hope that, you know, I, you know, and uh, I'm very happy that, you know, the World Development Foundation has signed an MOU with the Soviet Institute of Engineering and Technology to establish a center of excellence or using mass media for uh, agriculture development. You know, 
this is an important thing to show to the whole world to india that how you know even in non you know in a non agricultural university an engineering university can facilitate the technology for the benefit of the agriculture farming community and i am very happy that with the various you know pilot projects both in india and also abroad through various ministry you have demonstrated and uh, how the technology can be used and how the you know uh, you know uh, online courses can be you know uh, 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 organized for the for the benefit of the rural students and having hybrid you know uh, technologies you know the cloud radio and uh, wifi radio and uh, you know internet radio and uh, having both uh, audio and video you know communications yeah, yeah. so this technology has to be you know adopted in a very big manner and uh, my you know uh, request will be that you know the world development foundation and the soviet institute of engineering technology have to activate the memorandum of understanding which we have signed you know last year to see to that the benefits of this technology to the farming community in the rural area is is reaching and they become wiseful not the wiseless they have to be reached so thank you very much for your uh, participation